even today, the Linux community has this reputation for being fairly hostile to new people, hostile to people asking questions, and just hostile to people trying to get help in general. And while this might be true in some cases, I feel like in many situations it's very over-exaggerated and not as big of a deal as some people make it out to be. I'm certainly trying to do my part in improving it, but there are definitely places where, you know, work can be done in the way that, you know, people talk to each other. But I feel like in some cases, it's sort of on the person asking the question, because there are some people that come into places expecting everyone to fix their problems without them actually doing the work themselves. And it's absolutely okay to ask a stupid question, but it's important to respect people's time and show that you're actually trying to fix it yourself. So today we're going to go over some questions that I'm almost guaranteeing you've seen if you've been on a Linux subreddit or a Linux forum. And if you haven't seen these questions directly, you've definitely seen questions phrased like this and then explain why they're bad questions and how you could better phrase it to actually get, you know, a positive response from people who may want to help you. So first up we have, can you explain Linux to me like I'm 5? And this explain it like I'm 5 thing is annoyingly popular on Reddit. Or explain what Linux is. What is the point of Linux? Explain the point of Linux. Tell me what the point of Linux is. Things like this. Because what this shows is that you have put in absolutely no effort in trying to work out the answer yourself. While this might be useful if you're asking about, you know, kernel development or something where there may not... Actually, kernel development's a bad one because that sort of fits in the category as well. Something where there's not that many resources about it, maybe about some specific kernel module, for example, what this specific module actually does. That might be a valid question in that case. But in the case of something as broad and as popular as Linux, there's so many things you could be asking here. And there are so many good resources about learning what Linux is. It takes you two seconds with a search engine to find an explanation of what Linux is. If I can just send you a link to a search result, why would I bother answering your question? And Linux is such a broad topic, what are you actually asking about? Are you asking about distros, about server usage, about desktop Linux, about Linux software, about kernels, about kernel development, about software development, about package management, and countless other things that could be encompassed by explain what the purpose of Linux is, explain what Linux is. So before you go and ask any question like that, the first thing you should do is go and check if someone has already asked the question because they very likely have with something that popular and there may already be a good answer there because if it's already been answered, well, why would I answer it? But after you've done that, actually continue digging and see if you can find something where maybe you're not sure about. Let's say, for example, you're not sure about the NVIDIA kernel drivers, and you ask something like, I understand there's a kernel driver called NVIDIA, and there are kernel modules called NVIDIA Current, Novo, and NVIDIA FB. What is the difference between a kernel module and a kernel driver? What this shows is that you've done a little bit of research to know, okay, these are the things that exist. This is the thing that I'm not sure about. Can you help me or can you give me some resources to understand this specific thing that I'm not sure about? Next up, we have how do I use Vim or how do I use Emacs or how do I use any software out there? And this is just as bad of a question as the Linux one, because firstly, it's just as open, but also the answer to the question is not the answer you're looking for, because the answer there is the Vim documentation or the Emacs documentation. You go and read it and you'll learn how the software works. But what you're actually asking for here, and this is a much better way to phrase the question, is, hey, I understand the Vim documentation exists, but do you have any Vim tutorials or other third-party Vim resources that you would recommend for actually learning how to use Vim? If that's what you ask, you're far more likely to actually get 
a useful answer. But the problem with that question is, especially in cases of popular software, it's likely already been answered. So as before, make sure you actually do your research because you're likely to find the answer you're looking for anyway. Next up we have what is the best kernel or what is the best distro or what is the best text editor? What is the best sound server, best DE? What is the best anything on Linux? All of these have the exact same problem and there's no way to get around that. And that is they are all incredibly subjective. And you don't really have any of the information in the question itself to actually answer the question. All this question is going to turn into is a bunch of people fighting about, oh, this is my favorite thing and I am going to defend my favorite thing to the death. If you actually want a proper answer, are you running cutting edge hardware? Are you doing gaming? Is it for a server? Do you need support for things like Anbox without having to do any extra configuration. What are you doing on your computer that you are considering changing out your kernel for? All of that is incredibly crucial to answer the question. So a much better way to phrase that is saying, okay, I am running, let's say a AMD 3600X and an AMD 6600 XT, and I'm looking into alternative kernels and was looking for your experience running them in a gaming context. So now we have an idea about what's being done. We're doing gaming. Okay, we also have an idea about the hardware that's being run, which in some cases might actually be important for the kernel. For example, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, then setting up... I have a... Hi, cat. Uh, then... <laughs> then setting up the drivers with, say, the Zen kernel might be a little bit different than doing it on something like the Stable or the LTS kernel. But do be careful about the amount of information you're giving out. So while things like your CPU and your GPU might actually be very useful in answering a question about the kernel, things like your hard drive, your RAM, your power supply, those really don't matter whatsoever. And if you put those there, are just wasting people's time. So sometimes too much information is going to be just as annoying as too little information. And even though it's not going to stop people being able to answer the question because all of the context is there, a lot of people just won't bother answering it because they don't want to read your massive life story. But even with a perfectly structured question where you've done all of the prerequisite research, you've laid out the question in a way that people know what you know and they know what needs to be answered, even then, you can still not get a good answer, and that's because you just don't bother to know your audience. So ensure that you're actually asking the right people a question that you want to be answered. So if you have a bug with a program, then ask the developers, not the maintainer of the package, for example, unless it is a specific problem with the way the program is being packaged. And if you have a problem with Linux, you'd go to a Linux support forum or a Linux support subreddit or maybe a Linux support Discord channel or something like that, where people are already primed to help you with something related to Linux. You wouldn't go to, you know, r slash Windows or actually r slash linux even because r slash linux isn't intended to be a support forum it's there for talking about linux news and i guess talking about linux appearing on cash registers and other stupid things like that i went over questions that at least the person understands what a question is they understand that they are trying to get someone to actually help them and giving them at least some information, even if it's not good information, but for the love of God, please do not make a Reddit post or a forum post that says, help me, or Linux is broken, or Grub broke, or something like that. At least, please phrase it like a question so that someone knows what in the world you're talking about, and especially never, ever just put help me. If you put help me there, I'm going to just downvote it and probably just report it to the mods to be completely honest. While there's certainly some work to be done in the wider Linux community in the way they address these new users and the way they address people asking these basic questions, 
the first thing you should be doing is ensuring that you learn how to ask a question because even outside of Linux and outside of tech in general, knowing how to ask a good question is a fundamental skill that I feel like a lot of people are just never taught how to do and that's why you get a lot of these really bad forum posts and these really dumb comments asking really dumb things. Learn how to ask a question and it's going to help you throughout your entire life. But sometimes there won't be anyone who wants to or anyone who can answer your question. In which case, you gotta brush up on your research skills and make sure that, you know, they are at least somewhat functional. I would be lying if I said I came up with this video idea entirely by myself. So this video is actually based on a Reddit post I saw a couple months back, and I know it's rare, but occasionally you will actually see good content on Reddit, and this is an amazing post, and I would really recommend you going and just reading through it, because it's basically a shorthand of what we talked about today, with some slightly different examples and a little bit less context in some places, but I will leave it linked down below. So, I'm sure you've been in that situation where you've asked a bad question or just seen someone else asking a bad question and how did you approach it with the responses you got and the response you gave let me know i would really like to know and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these people over here and you can grab the words you can go to my page on subscribe only barrel pay linked in the description down below I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or six YouTube shorts. And I forgot that cat was in my room earlier. That that was not a planned bit. Uh, that, that just happened. Anyway, I'm out.